What is up you guys welcome back to the channel coming at you with yet again another perfume experience and for today and as per the title below I have none other than EO1 Sultani Oud. Now I've never obtained or owned any of the previous iterations of this so this is my first uh, sort of a uh, furrow into uh, the EO one edition and uh, Yeah, so this is the Sultani edition and as you can see it is marvelously mar marvelously marvelously um, done uh, I really really like the wooden cap and also that leather pouch. I don't have any other perfume that's like this, so this is really unique. You have the number one at the front, then pure perfume on the side, and then the Ansar Oud logo right here, and uh, also Ansar Oud in writing here embossed. And uh, this one is interesting because um, when I first got it, I hated it. <laughs> I thought I got scammed out of money. Uh, the only other Ansar Oud I have in my collection that I felt the same way about was Oud Royale. Uh, but then I've realized that some of the oils, because these are pure essential oils, uh, when they do get shipped over here by DHL through air, I think they're um, shipped in pressurized compartments and it ends up affecting the molecular structure possibly of the oil. So it takes somewhere between a day to literally five days uh, for the scent to settle down and for me to be able to actually pick on and enjoy it. And that's exactly what happened with this, similarly with Oud Royale. And now Oud Royale is one of my all time favorites, especially the mix of the um, 80s rose auto in it mixed with the Mongolian musk is just to die for and this has achieved that sort of um, Affinity with me if you wish uh, So yeah, I just one thing before we get started if you do decide to pull the trigger on this do not judge it <laughs> The next day give it at least a week for it to rest after you receive it before you uh, apply it. And I'm gonna give you away my favorite thing about this. It's the Taifi Rose in here. My God, it is just heavenly, majestic, regal. We'll get into this, all right? We'll get into this. Uh, so what we'll do today is we will go over the musing and the notes off of the Insar Oud website. And then I will do a perfume experience with you guys. We'll see how far I can go in terms of implementing the scent because my allergies are kicking in. And uh, yeah, I've been trying to take it easy with all the essential oil applications, but I'll do that for you guys. But before we get started, and as per tradition on this channel, make sure to grab your favorite snack, your favorite bevy, or as in my case, cafe. And sit back, relax, enjoy the awesomeness that's about to head your way. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I'm excited for this one. I ain't gonna lie. All right. So, you want Sultani. Leather and oud go together like king and crown. And there's no sweeter spot between the rustic allure of Ansar's artisanal, often mad oud world and popular perfumery than this odalicious addition to the queer or cure tradition. <laughs> a rugged aroma that makes you wonder if Hemingway just lit up a Cuban or if Churchill's in town. I, listen, I'm gonna say this, Professor, before we continue here. The tobacco note in here is so, so nice, but you it takes a few hours uh, into the dry down for it to really come through and it is a nice cigar tobacco kind of a scent like if you've ever picked a Maduro uh, But you're not gonna pick it off of the get-go. You need to give it a few hours on your skin. Anyways 
After 15 fragrant years, I finally took off my jungle jacket for a tie to dive headfirst into my debut spray perfume and create number one. Since its first release, each iteration has had a unique flavor, still retaining the number one profile, but showing off a different dimension as we literally poured all we had of our precious distillations into the perfume. I approach perfume the way I do oud distillation. That's why number one is composed of the rarest, most expensive ingredients in all of perfumery, including copious amounts of precious ouds. Not only is this among the highest quality oud fragrances that have ever been produced in spray format, the entire composition is infused into a high concentration, genuine raw ambergris tincture instead of just plain ethanol. Similar tinctures of this kind sell for around 400 pounds for 30 ml. Here, it's already included, but not just any ambergris. I've literally been called stupid for insisting to use such olfactory gems in a perfume. In fact, most critics and professionally trained perfumers advocate using synth synthetics exclusively. Advocate, I meant. And I see their point. Why sacrifice rare rose and oud instead of synthetics that are a thousand times cheaper? Not to mention, and this is a staple argument, you never have to worry about reproducing the scent. I.e. it's scalable so you can sell a lot more. I insist on these insanities because to me and people like me, there is a difference. You smell low grade or lab made oud, aka the oud note, and all you can do is laugh at how it's being compared to real high caliber oud. Most can't even tell. But to any Oud novice, the difference is red and blue. Novice or novice, okay. Number one lets you exude wafts of a tobacco heavy, old school leather jacket aroma with an unmistakable Dom Carleone kiss my hand, Campagno Esteem. Who the fuck writes these? <laughs> I, think they're, I think they're trying to come across as being cool, but they're so, so cheesy, okay. Subtle, but not soft, with a base that's all oud and vintage horse saddle leather. The recent buzz around the OG number one is partly because many fragheads missed out on it sold out in 2018, but also because those who stashed away a bottle and smelled it again recently were so blown away by that first edition. The OG came in Habib's hand-worked full-grain Italian calf leather, topped with a square wooden cap and boasted a fusion of certain ooze that gave it its unique edge. Well, how's this? Not only does this edition match the OG composition as close as humanly possible, I actually set out to make it even better. How? For starters, two of the key aromatics have been upgraded. You've now got the Sultan's own Vintage Rose Auto dating back to the 80s, drunk on a massive dose of vintage SQ oud. I chose specific batches of my 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 tikina my tikina and Indian Antel oud to create a fusion that most resembles the OG's oud profile. Except the oud component in this edition is even richer and two decades older. In this edition, as well as the OG, I chose Agalacha Ouds because of how well their sour spicy warmth goes with the number one's tobacco leather profile. Compared to the OG though, this edition features objectively better and more mature Oud oil. The result is not only an Oudier number one, but because of the specific Ouds used and the more diffusive quality of Eishta Ifi Otto, that leather jacket cigar suave smells at once more husky and polished style. At polished stylish. Weird English, but okay. And it all comes steeped in the late Sultan Caboose's own vintage ambergris. The same stones that went into Oud Royale. See, I knew there's a reason I would compare this to Oud Royale. Okay, so uh, now that the interruption is gone, and it all comes steeped in the late Sultan Caboose's own vintage ambergris, the same stones that went into Oud Royale. So, there's a reason why I compared it to Oud Royale and had a feeling that it works the same way. 
now you've heard it. So there's quite a bit of similarity between this and Oud Royale. So just keep that in mind. And they're both, my God. Oh, drool worthy, you guys. Okay, so the top we have Sultan Caboose's Ambergris, Lavender, Rosewood, Siam Wood, Nutmeg, and Castorium. The heart we have a Sultan Kaboos Vintage My My Takina Oud Vintage Typhi Rose Bulgarian Rose Juhi Jasmine and Tolo Balsam and Civet and then in the base you have Antil Assam Oud Sri Lankan Sandalwood Tobacco Vanilla Oak Moth Ethiopian Frankincense. No doubt, number one is not your typical extra de parfum. It's not supposed to be. I wouldn't dream of topping the master queers or cures. I have no idea how it's pronounced. That come before, nor do I subscribe to modern industry standards of how long, how loud, and how far. This is an indie cure that's limited and rare, where I simply wanted to add an oud inspired rendition to the legacy of queer de Russie and offer perfume lovers the chance to experience just how amazing and exalting a fixative artisanal oud can be. In EO number one, you pass third base to smell oud and leather, drunk and in love in a perfume that's a first in a vibrant cure heritage that's been turning top hats and making hearts melt for decades. Right, you guys, so that is it for the musing. And the notes, oh, actually I need more coffee, it's so delicious you guys. For those of you that don't drink coffee or hate coffee, I, I, I don't know how you go through your day. All right, so the leather does smell nice, I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> on the outside anyways. So you guys, here we go, we're gonna apply this. All right, I just need a little bit to be honest, you guys, because like I said, my allergies are going through the roof and uh, yeah. So I've sprayed spray print wise. Actually, let me see the lighting. This should be better. Okay, right about here. All right. And um, as you can see, it's uh, fairly light. I didn't go very heavy. It is slightly yellowish, but light yellow. Uh, it is oily and resinous. And uh, yeah, just be careful around whites because even though it's light yellow, you will still get a stain. All right. So one of the things that I was actually talking to my father the other day, and I was talking to him about this, and I told him, listen, I have the artisanal version of one of your favorite perfumes ever. And by the way, one of his favorites is Kuros, or Kuros, which is a civet-based perfume from the 70s or 80s, I believe. And this reminded me a lot of it. It's not as strong and potent as Kuros, but it's very close to it in a lot of ways because this does have civet in it too. Uh, but with that said, it's already wafting towards you guys. Oh my god, this is like sexy oud right here. Woo! Oh, okay. <laughs> this is... Wow! God damn! I love the tobacco in here too. Like, I know I said it doesn't really come in until the dry down. But god. Oh! Dude, man, I fucking hate this house. <laughs> I really do. They're taking so much of my money. It's fucking stupid. It's so good, you guys. I mean, it's it's masculine, elegant, uh, like bad boy vibe to it, but very classy too. The civet in here is undeniably civet, but there's no urinal notes, there's no pissy notes, it's not animalic whatsoever. Actually, let me go through the notes with you guys, so. 
I can tell you what is in it and what is not. So ambergris. So you do get this fresh, fizzy, oceanly note to it. Lavender. There is lavender in here, and thank God it's undertoned uh, because I do have Tibetan musk from EO, which has lavender. And the lavender in it is so loud. And I love Tibetan musk, but it, it triggers my allergies like <laughs> it's nobody's business. So I love lavender, but I'm so glad that it's toned down here. Uh, rosewood, Siam wood, I have no idea what these smell like, so I can't comment on that. Nutmeg, I know what it smells like. And yes, you get this beautiful, beautiful nutmeg. I use nutmeg in my own cooking, you guys. I added the hot chocolate too to my oatmeal, and it's just, I love nutmeg. Castorium. Now, I don't know what it smells standalone. I have different perfumes with natural castorium in it. And uh, my understanding is that it's very perfumey, naturally perfumey. So, you know what? The perfume smells perfumey. So I'm assuming it's, <laughs> it's doing all right in there. Then you have the uh, Maitakinia Oud. So that's in the heart now. And this is definitely a really, really nice Oud in here, you guys. It's just fantastic. The, the vintage Taifi Rose, Bulgarian Rose. Uh, and Jovi Jasmine. So let me tell you something. The Taifi in here, you guys, it is so, so, so. Oh my God, it's so heavenly. And, and the beauty of it is that it doesn't have this jamminess to it. It doesn't have this bite, like this sort of stab you in the nose bite that some rose oils have. It's just very delicate, soft tender like kind of a i don't know <laughs> this is gonna sound weird but you ever touch a baby skin <laughs> this is what comes to mind when i smell this i don't know it's just as delicate as a baby's butt <laughs> okay and i've changed a lot of diapers trust me on this one wow okay bulgarian rose um i mean sure juhi jasmine yeah, you do get the jasmine in there. Uh, Tolo balsam, so I'm not too sure. And then the civet. And like I said, the civet here is probably one of the best civets I've ever smelled. It reminds me a lot of the... Um, God, I have another Ansar Oud with civet in it. The civet musk Oud combination. I can't remember the name of it right now. It's like off of the top of my head, but... The civet in here is uh, much more subtle compared to that virgin, but it's also so, so good, you guys. Okay? And then in the base, you have Antil Assam Oud, so I know the Oud. Then there's Sri Lankan Sandalwood. Yeah, so you do get this creaminess sort of calming effect of Sandalwood. Tobacco, dude, the tobacco in here. I'm not a big tobacco note fan, but the tobacco in here, you guys, trust me. It's so, so good. And it's not the sickening, overpowering tobacco, um, for example. And it's not bad at all, but depending on my day or mood or my allergy sensitivity, I find that the tobacco in the Homeros or Homeros uh, perfume edition can be a bit overpowering. But here, it's just it's so well balanced. And it's not... A, an ashy tobacco it's more of a you're lighting up a fresh cigar kind of a tobacco smell it's it's just so so nice then you have vanilla yes you do get vanilla in here there's definitely a gourmandish touch oak moss is definitely there for sure and ethiopian frankincense so yes so Overall, this, you guys, is just such, such a great scent. Um, I'm gonna say, like, it's it's very classical scent in the way it smells. Um, it's very, it's very, what's the word I'm looking for? My brain is not functioning. More coffee. It's a very nostalgic yes that's the word i'm looking at 
uh, I'm thinking of. It's very nostalgic, but also new. So it's nostalgic, familiar, but also new and unfamiliar, if that makes any sense. It's a play on a, on a pre-existent DNA, uh, and the play doesn't come from changing the notes as much as the ingredients projecting the notes. So this is why I said when I was talking to my father, you know, I mentioned, hey, listen, I have something for you. And it's not made of any synthetics. Not that the Koros is completely synthetic because I know back in the day, the civet they used in it was natural civet. This is why the spray nozzles always had a yellow stain on them when you used them is because of the civet. Uh, but uh, I told him, listen, I have the artisanal version of Koros right here. It's not 100% identical, but it, it will refresh your memory. Like it, it's gonna trigger core memories up here, okay? And uh, yeah, it just has this very 70s, 80s, elegant, classic, masculine uh, scent to it. Uh, kind of, a, you know, my, my dad, my father, I, I don't like saying dad. It's just too, I don't know, father. <laughs> my father uh, used to be a businessman and he's just always put cross on a suit and this just triggered that memory for me so it's that masculine formal scent and it's just gorgeous 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 granted it's about a million times the price of a bottle of a cross but <laughs> uh you know you get what you pay for okay so let's talk some stats um in terms of performance i'm gonna go ahead and say uh, medium to strong and more leaning towards strong in terms of uh, projection and medium trail and sludge and here's why I just sprayed a little bit you guys not a lot I didn't press the whole sprayer uh, all the way down and I'm already getting quite a bit of projection even right after I sprayed it I had a good amount of projection so I'm gonna say that the projection on this one uh, is strong uh, trail and sludge I'm just gonna you know lean more on the cautious side and say medium just again knowing my skin and also the fact that this is 100 percent natural essential oils uh, predominantly uh, i'm gonna say that they're not just they're not gonna project as strongly as a um, ethanol based or alcohol based scent okay it's just the nature of the chemical compositions and how molecules behave once they're aired but uh, it, it's up there. It's probably one of the strongest performers out of Ansar Oud in terms of projection, trail, and silage. I can't say that for a lot of the others, they would be on the same level. So you're definitely getting a stronger scent profile out of this one. So projection, strong, trail, and silage, medium to strong. Okay. With respect to uh, seasonality, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is versatile enough to wear across all seasons. However, I will say that this one is a bit on the cooler side, even though there's oud, sandalwood, and whatnot in it. So maybe it's a bit hot weather leaning in terms of wearability. So I see this more summer, spring wear, but it is versatile enough to wear across all four seasons. But I don't know, I just it doesn't have this warmth or resinous, hot, muggy profile to it. Uh, that you get with a lot of the other compositions. That's why I'm saying it's versatile for all seasons, but more warm weather leaning, okay? In terms of time of day, I'm gonna say I had versatile enough to wear in the morning or the evening. In the morning, you can wear it and it's gonna be fine. It's not overbearing uh, or overpowering. And in the evening, it is just gonna have a different sense of allure, sexiness, and attractiveness to it. So it works very well across the day. With respect to how you dress this, listen, do yourself a favor, do this scent a favor, and dress formally, okay? Three-piece suit, preferably, a nice tie, a tie pin, a collar pin, cuff links, some nice bespoke shoes, some nice um, sartorial suit, really. Uh, yeah, and just, you know, enjoy yourself, baby. Make sure you have a cigar too, so it will go well with this. But no, seriously, in all seriousness, uh, you need to formally dress this. 
I, I just, you can wear it casually. Obviously, I sprayed it now indoors casually, but uh, this needs uh, the respect and dignity it deserves, and you need to dress it formally, okay? With respect uh, to gender sort of profile, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a masculine scent. Definitely ladies can wear it, but why would you? <laughs> I mean, just buy it for your man and ask him to put it on, honestly. Uh, I think this is more of a masculine scent. And uh, yeah, if you're a guy, a dude, a man, a male, uh, a Neanderthal, you're gonna enjoy this, <laughs> okay? So this is definitely a masculine leaning scent. There's no twos or buts about it. With respect to context, uh, you would wear this in, listen, any situation that demands decorum, respect, power, influence, okay, wear this in. And that does not just necessitate being in the boardroom or taking like meetings or power lunches. It could be on the golf course. You could be in Nobu uh, having some really nice sushi or... Um, I mean, what else? Any position of high status hierarchy, that's your scent, okay? Again, context-wise though, it's gonna be formal settings, really is where this is gonna come to shine. If you're in a casual setting, mm, I mean, I, I don't know, I just, not, not, I wouldn't wear it in a casual setting, okay? Uh, one thing I will mention, age group-wise, uh, I think this is more for the mature man. So basically your late 20s and upwards. And I think you're not going to really appreciate this until you're about mid 30s and upwards. If you're a younger guy watching this, you can definitely rock it. It's just that it's a serious scent for a serious man. And I doubt that any young guy, unless you're traumatized somehow <laughs> by life, you're going to have this air of seriousness to you. Seriousness, generally speaking, comes with experience, and this scent portrays the calm that comes with experience, the authority that comes with experience. Uh, it's the air of know-how and confidence from failing multiple times, surviving failure, lean, learning from it, and moving forward. Uh, and this is why I say it's a more of a mature gentleman scent, not to stop you as a younger guy from going for it, but just keep that in mind is that if you put this on and you're 19, there's a congruence issue there. It's a very incongruent, right? Unless, like I said, you have a very unique life experience that was full of hardships that you survived from a young age and you just project this maturity and sense of seriousness to you then you can pull it off. But I generally speaking wouldn't recommend for a younger guy. And I don't think younger guys generally speaking, you know, having been there myself, would have an appreciation for a lot of the notes and ingredients in here. Okay? With that said, you guys, would I recommend Ansar Oud number one, Sultani Oud edition? 100% yes. Get your nose on it, get your wallet on it, cop it. You will not regret it, this one, you know, is really, really, really <laughs> uh, enjoyable for me, along with Oud Royale, which is not a surprise. Uh, just if you get this or Oud Royale, again, make sure to rest it at least five days after you receive it. I'm telling you, if you spray it beforehand, I'm not sure what it is about shipping, but you don't really get the most out of the scent until it rests with this one and Oud Royale in particular. It needs to rest for whatever reason. Uh, so yeah, just make sure to let it rest for about five days and then relish in the... Right, well, I think my camera just stopped recording, so I'm assuming it's telling me to wrap it up. Uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, relish in the majesty of this gorgeous, gorgeous scent. Uh, all right, you guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. As per usual, very much appreciate your time and attention, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.